We now want to do a calculation involving half-life of a uh, radioactive isotope. So our uh, particular choice here is going to be strontium-90. We have a container that contains 0.56 grams of this at time equals zero. Uh, calculate the activity and use the units of curies. There will be some conversion factor towards the end here. But to calculate activity, the activity, and we use R to stand for the activity symbol, radioactivity, so R. And we find this number by taking a number called lambda, the decay constant, multiplied by N, the number of radioactive nuclei that we have. So in this context, lambda is not the wavelength. Lambda is not the wavelength. So let's first do the lambda number. The lambda number has a definition of 0 0.693 divided by the half-life, divided by the half-life. Well, we have to look up in a table and we'll find that 28.8 years is the half-life for this isotope, strontium-90. So 0.693, a constant, divided by the half-life. Well, we want to get to the units of seconds, not uh, how, what's our activity in decays per year, but what's our activity in decays per second. So I'm going to apply some conversion factors here. Um, we can you know, take advantage that the um, one year, we'll do it brute force, 365.25 is how many days it takes the Earth to go around the sun in one year. And then we have a conversion between days and hours, one day, 24 hours. And then a conversion between hours and seconds, one hour, it's 3,600 seconds. So applying those, we get our lambda number, our uh, decay constant here, 7.625 and 10 to the minus 10. And we're in units of 1 over seconds now for the lambda. 7.625 times 10 to the minus 10. There's another option here. Um, there's 3.156 times 10 to the 7th seconds in a year. So we could have divided, you know, do this division and then divide by here, and we'd get uh, pretty much that same number, I believe. You could try it. The other number we need is the number of nuclei, number of nuclei. So to accomplish that calculation, we start with the fact that there's 90 grams per mole. and use that combined with our 0.56 grams. So our value of N is going to be 0.56 grams divided by 90 grams per mole. After we do this division, we'll have the number of moles. Then we need to multiply by Avogadro's number, 6.02, 10 to the 23rd. It'll be a number of nuclei uh, per mole. So our value of N 3.75 times 10 to the 21 nuclei. So there's our calculation for um, you know, its number of atoms, but it's also the number of nuclei, same value. There's our value for capital N. Um, we now combine these, so we have a, uh, a calculation R is lambda times N. So the R value, and again, you should pause here and do this calculation uh, on your own. But when we multiply these two out, we get 2.86 times 10 to the 12th decays per second. And again, we're multiplying the lambda number and the capital N number, the number of nuclei we have, multiplying those two together and we come up with the uh, uh, 2.86 10 to the 12th decays per second. To put it into the units of curies, there's a conversion factor. Why not? So one curie, 3.7 times 10 to the 10th uh, decays per second. So this would end up with 77.3 curies. That's a huge number. We've got a significant amount of grams of the strontium-90. Um, so 77.3 curies 
keep your distance, wear protective clothing, um, don't stay near this source very long. So that's our example there. Now let's do another, uh, I'll get into the half-life, so that's activity. So calculate the length of time for this sample to get down to 0.22 grams of the strontium-90. How much time would have to elapse? And we're going to say we have a sealed container, that's best, when we have radioactive material. Um, but we do this calculation with our basic rule for radioactivity. Um, the number of particles we have at a later time equals our original number of, of nuclei, e to the minus lambda t. And um, this can be the number of particles, or it can be the number of grams, or it can be the activity. They're just conversion factors to go between those, uh, those values. So we can work with grams here. And we want 0.22 grams later. We're starting with uh, the 0.56 grams. And we have E to the minus 7.625 times 10 to the minus 10. And we have an unknown time. So we're taking advantage of the work from part A, our lambda value, 7.625 times 10 to the minus 10 and using that down here. So we have our unknown under the control of an exponential. We have to do a few simplifications. First, we would divide by the 0.56. Uh, so if I uh, accomplish that, again, you should you know, pause occasionally and check this in your calculator. So I get 0 0.3929. And over here, still this exponential, e to the minus 7.625, 10 to the minus 10, how do we get rid of this exponential function? Well, we take natural log of both sides. Take natural log of both sides. That's the number and the function. When I take natural log of this number, I generate minus 0 0.9343. When I take natural log of e to a power, these two functions are inverse functions of each other, and they cancel. The natural log function will cancel the effect of the exponential function. So I just get the exponent, 7.625, 10 to the minus 10, multiplied by t. And now it's division. The minus signs will cancel. Divide 0.9343 by 7.625 times 10 to the minus 10. And you'll find t is equal to 1.225 times 10 to the ninth seconds, a billion seconds. <coughs> Again, I'm going to apply a conversion factor. So to put this into years, um, one year, 3.156 times 10 to the seventh seconds. And I come up with 38.8 years. You know, apply the conversion factor 3.156 times 10 to the 7 seconds for a year. I get 38.8 years. Is that a reasonable number? Uh, we started with 0.56 grams. In one half-life, <laughs> we have one half-life, we would be down to 0.28. We're going to a lower number here, 0.22 grams, so we should have a time longer than the half-life. The half-life is uh, 28.8 years, and we are longer than that. So that's an example of calculating activity. R is equal to lambda, the decay constant, times n. Lambda is 0.693 divided by the half-life. The exponential decay, telling us how many uh, radioactive isotopes nuclei are remaining. That n is equal to n naught e to the minus lambda t. This n can be in grams, it can be in the count of the number of nuclei, it can be in the activity. Uh, all those are, are valid as long as you use the same units on both sides of the equal sign. So practice with that. Ask questions.